Hey guys, John Luxley here, back with our blind playthrough of the Silver Case. Good thing the controller works, Jack, baby. Alright, would you, would you like to come here? Come here, come here, you weird cat. I had to restart the recording just because he uh, decided to walk across the mouse and click some buttons, and I was like, oh, I can't really start like this. Jack, baby. Okay. Oh, right, I forget it's not A, it's B. Right, so... It's a little bit loud on my end. It's probably about what it is for you guys. Let's see, so last time we left off... Oh, you can see all the stuff at the bottom! That's all the chapters? Lunatics, Decoy Man, Spectrum, Parade, Kamui, Life Cut, White Out. DA something A Yume Hana Tsuki I Hikari Yami. Those are all female names though, which is kind of weird. Or at least the What are you what are you doing? What <laughs> Lay down, lay down then. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. You are so cute. He doesn't understand how cute he is. Okay. I don't know if you're able to see it, his head kind of came up from the bottom of the screen because he's all, like, being a weirdo. All right. Okay. Oh. <sighs> okay, let's try that again. It's this button. Yes. Continue. Continue's good. Right, so last time uh, we got some background about Kamui. And let me push my chair back just a bit. Am I in the right? Mirror. Uh, we got some background about about Kamui. Uh, we saw him kill the team from the first mission, basically. Uh, Sakamoto and Inomata were killed, and their eyes were removed, or at least one of their eyes. It actually appeared to be a different eye from each one. Uh, and... I don't remember the dude's name. Tetsuo... Tetsugoro is his full name, I think. Uh, but he was saying that Kamui, when he killed, he removed body parts. You know, they didn't say whether Natsume, the chief, whether he had a body part removed as well. He wasn't killed. He's in the ICU in critical condition, but uh, we don't know. So back with, you know, Decoy Man. I don't know if that's super loud with you guys. I'm going to turn it down for myself just a bit. All right, so we're going to move. Oh, let me move. Let me move this out of the way. We can't go this way. Wait. Okay, so we can talk to those two. We can talk to the same guy twice. Let's try talking to him. What is it, this button? Oh, they're generic cop. Generic cop A, generic cop B. And I'm kind of chewing on my cheek for some reason. I don't know why. It's not intentional. Who's Kamui? I don't really know either, but apparently he's some top secret serial killer. But I've never actually heard of him. It was all just rumors before. Nobody thought he was actually a real person. Why is this all not publicized? It's a great question. This world is full of the unknown. I thought it was just made-up stories. There's lots of stuff that little guys like you and I simply never know. They're not kidding. Crime is just like the darkness. It isn't meant to be seen. I think if most people knew what actually went on out there, just all the bad stuff, I don't think there'd be very many sane people left. Then again, people watch the news every day, and they're just like, ah, oh, another person got shot, another person got stabbed, meh. So, you know. That makes sense. I cannot talk to them anymore. Let's talk to these two. Hachisuka. Is that not Hachisuka? What's up with the body? 
No, no, she's Hachisuka. Take a look. We're just getting started. Seems like not much time has passed. Can you just keep quiet for me? Who's this? A special survivor. We brought him just in case. His name is John. Okay. Hi, John. My name is Hachisuka. My name is John, but you can call me Big Dick. Yeah. <laughs> He's in a state of shock. He can't speak. Well then, good thing you brought him along then, huh? It was... It was Tetsu. Kusabi. Hmm. Whoa. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't... Oh, I was gonna say, I don't know why the... The water faded out, but I guess it just repeated. Um, yeah, Kusabi. Steel, get this out of the way. Approximately 12 hours since the time of death. It looks like decay is progressing, but a lot of water has entered and the skin is simply swelling. 12 hours. It was Kamui. The time frame fits. Five hours between the woods and this. That would be enough time. Got an ID? Not yet. Let's hurry and find where it happened. So he didn't actually kill her here? Nope. He did it somewhere else and then left her here. So it would stand out more. I'll handle the ID. Do it. Sumio, take a look around. Roger that. Hachisuka. Where is Hachisuka? She left. She left? To attend the autopsy. Without even fucking saying anything. That sort of research is important, so... Whatever. Fuck it. How about it, big dick? You remember anything? Interesting. And I can talk to them no matter which way I face. But now I can go forward into the water. And it looks like there's a sun icon up there. But we'll talk to these guys first. Sumio, we've got to search upstream too. We've got to search upstream. So I've basically gotten out of the habit of talking to people multiple times in, in games. Uh, because, at least these days, they basically only have one line. It's not like RPGs of 20 years ago, where they say multiple things and then eventually get to the point where their lines repeat. The point I'm making is that this game is from 20 years ago. Even though it's remastered, we have to remember it still has, you know... 20 year old game design so it's very possible that these guys will repeat themselves until we've exhausted all their dialogue and that's that's just really important just in, you know for for completionists and and story sake what's wrong you lost yeah what's wrong what's wrong all right let's go this way that's pretty slick i i still think you know, even though it's re rendered I assume it's re-rendered, I have no idea. It's, um... And the sound fades, too, a little bit. Oh, except that's probably... It's gonna start again here in a second, yeah. So why can I not go to that other green dot? Let's try going that way now. I can't. Maybe that's where we came from to get to this point? I don't... I don't actually remember. <laughs> I'm congested again. Sorry about that. Always. Help me, help me, help me. That's a woman. Potentially. It's Genova. Weird. That's a doll. Mm. 
In the bright and dark plaza, everyone played together in harmony and killed each other. That actually seems like a poem. Don't go, Jack. Don't go. Don't go! Where are you going? Okay, fine. Go then. It feels like a poem, like a haiku or something. With wonderful smiles, the gentlemen laugh happily and say... Do you want to be happy, baby? Do you want to be happy, baby? Do you want to be happy, baby? The gaudy man said it three times in a row. Everyone looks so happy and answers. I'm going to be happy, mama. Everyone wants to be happy. I can't wait for the fun weekend. What's up, big dick? The hell is that? It's a doll, right? What is this old thing doing here? No idea. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> Alright, well, we're out of the sewers now. We're going somewhere else. To that other red point. The 24th Precinct. Or 24 Wards Precinct, presumably. March 29, 1999. Monday, Office 24. 11 a.m. Heinous Crimes Unit 1. You can tell it's old because the computers have CRT monitors and they have a, a floppy disk drive. And they have big towers. <clears throat> Naka, get everyone together. I want to gather info on the events leading up to here and how we'll move forward. And because he's smoking, everyone smokes. More specifically, I think Japanese people smoke a lot. 24 Ward's heinous crime prevention chief director, Kotobuki Shinji. I like how it gives him a little intro. It's like, here's this dude. Japanese. Uh, I assume that says Kotobuki Shinji. Age 51, sex male, affiliation 24 Ward's heinous crimes unit. HC unit boss. Deeply insightful and very conscientious and sympathetic. Consequently, his popularity is amazing. Kurobuki doesn't directly go out into the field, but he provides crucial support from the sidelines. Cases are never solved by chasing them from Kurobuki's point of view. You have to wait patiently. He is a man who knows how to manage people. Got it. I didn't see what his name was. Naka Sakagawa or something. Oh, well, we'll see. 24 Wards Heinous Crimes Unit 1, Special Agent Naka Tegawa. I was pretty close. Naka, Naka Tegawa Morichika. Such weird names. Naka Tegawa. Japanese. Age 35, sex male affiliation, 24 wards, heinous crimes unit 1, weapon, SIG Pro. An eccentric man who usually works investigations alone. And interestingly enough, the art, it looks a lot like the... When did the original Persona games come out? Mid-90s? I think the original PlayStation came out about this time. So it, it does have that that specific kind of like the pencil art style. I don't I don't know how to convey what I mean, but I hope you guys, if you've seen some of the original like art stuff from Persona, I think you guys know what I mean. Up until about It really looks like uh, Persona 2. Either of them. An eccentric man who usually works investigations alone. Originally from the public security department, he has connections all over the place. He's also close with neighboring jurisdictions and supports investigations with his own info. His trademarks are his slicked back hair and pressed shirts. That's a trademark? 
It's cool, though. Hurry the fuck up and get it done. 24 is Heinous Crimes Unit 2, Special Agent Kusabi, Tetsugoro. Age, 44, Sex Male, Affiliation, 24 Wards, Heinous Crimes Unit 2, Weapon, Cult Officers, ACP. I feel like I should know more about weapons for this, but I don't. Out of loyalty to veteran Detective Kurabuki, he joined the Heinous Crimes Unit upon its establishment. He seems to be wearing, like, a... A V-neck shirt? I don't know. Slack khakis? Sports jacket? He sometimes acts as Sumio's stopper and sometimes troubles the younger agents with his explosive behavior. I want to know about Sumio. More afraid of being hated by his daughter than anything else in the world, Kusabi is seriously considering quitting smoking. I don't think he can. I think he's too dependent upon it. Currently, his biggest source of worry is his eldest daughter, Toriko's overseas studies. Overseas America? Which, which daughter? His eldest daughter? He's got multiple daughters then? Let's get started. Here we go. The only one with a weapon drawn in their profile picture also. Uh, 24 Words Heinous Crimes Unit 2, Special Agent Kodai Sumio. So Sumio is his first name. Japanese, age 26, sex, male, affiliation 24 Words Heinous Crimes Unit 2, weapon Sig Sauer P229. The Sig Sauer is a pretty heavy pistol, I think. The backbone of the 24 Wards HC unit, he works investigations together with, Kus with Kusabi. Not one to conform to nor... One to conform to nor conflict with the police force. He knows his place and puts all of his focus on crime. Where's Morikawa? 24 Wards Haines Crimes Unit 1, Special Agent ha Hachisuka Chizuru. H25, Sex Female Affiliation, 24 Wards, Weapon, 6 Hour P232. A different pistol. You'd think they'd have a standardized weapon, but... Then again... She's... She's probably smaller, so you probably want, like, a lighter pistol, or a smaller pistol. Assigned to the HC unit as Morikawa's partner, a beautiful female detective. Morikawa was the dude with the glasses. The one that looked like one of the Beatles. I'm not sure which one, though. Originally worked in the crime lab, if the Beatles were Japanese, I guess. Her father is 24 Wards Mayor Kaoru Hachisaka. Hachisuka. Extremely serious and hardworking when it comes to her duties, she's quite proud and tends to stick out within the department. Not very well liked by Kusabi. Sorry, I'm late. Okay, I'm just gonna skip all that. Morikawa Kiyoshi. Age 38, looks older than that. Sex male affiliation. Weapon Beretta M92F. Join the HC unit together with Kusabi from the time it was established. One of the oldest members, having learned the basics of investigation from Kotobuki. Kotobuki was the chief? Known for his excellent investigation work, he is a support specialist. Cleverly using the truth to his advantage, his investigative style is veteran level. Strongly trusted by Kotobuki, he is usually tasked with writing up silver case reports. So is silver case just like a... I don't know what you call it, like a classification for very important cases. Hello, this is not... Uh, this is gonna mess me up. Na Naka Tagawa. Kamui Uehara has escaped from the hospital isolation ward and has killed four people. Not bad for his, what, first day? 
He's currently still large, maybe maybe a couple days. Kamui is assumed to have made his way into the city where he is currently in hiding. Now, three things. First off, there's something I'd like everyone to be consi consistent with. The official name of this case is the Kamui case. It's a good, simple name. Second, I'd like you all to watch this video. Hachisuka, start the tape. All right, let's watch the video. This video comes from a guard robot. Jesus. Okay. Well, how thorough. Fast forward it. I can't. It'll damage the tape head. Whatever, let it play. This is the scene of the crime. There in the back is where the counseling room is located. Yeah, so what? What about it? This is where the female victim worked. At the time of the murder, she was wearing her own clothes. The one we found in the sewer, I assume. So he changed her. So she was going home? Yes. So what does this mean? Any hospital this large has changing rooms. Yes, that's correct. The job requires a uniform and due to rules concerning health and safety, wearing one's own private clothes while entering or leaving is prohibited. I don't think that's right, but okay. I mean, I think they mean on the job. So there was someone she wanted to see so badly she was willing to break the rules. Oh no, they must mean in this case you actually have to show up in uniform. Okay. We have to change. We have to show up in work to work in our normal clothes, and then we have to change into scrubs once we get there. They don't want you wearing the hospital uniforms outside because they consider it stealing. And sometimes security will chase you down in the parking lot. Not where I currently work, but where I used to work. Of course, it's funny because you can still walk out carrying, you know, tens or a hundred thousand of dollars worth of equipment and they don't care about that they don't know they stopped they stopped the guy and they're like oh wait wait those are your own scrubs okay you're cool you can you can go yeah but he was armfuls of, of equipment oh this is mine you know <laughs> all right so there was someone she wanted to see so badly she was willing to break the rules She's believed to have been meeting with Kamui in secret. There you go. The fuck is wrong with this broad? Lovesick, I'd assume. She works in a hospital, after all. No way. No way. If you're an attractive woman, it doesn't matter. Especially if you're an attractive woman. I just had a weird thought about one of the women that I work with. I wonder if she went to Dubai. She has photos in foreign countries. And what else? So Kamui killed her. We've gotten some comments. Apparently the victim, Yuriko Sonata, Sonoda, and Kamui were involved physically they were fucking and it seems it was strictly one-sided from Sonoda so he was like comatose and she was you know that is very killer seven isn't it that's what the the nurse in killer seven was doing too Kamui was mentally impotent so so he's pretty much like a fag. <laughs> I mean, let's be straight. I think homosexuals have more sex than anybody else. Wow, what a lucky dude. 
To a woman, he may have been the ideal man, like a doll with no emotions who will never betray you. The perfect man, whom you can just set down by your side forever. You think so? No, I, I don't. Wouldn't that be boring? Also, assuming all, wom all women like that is pretty sexist. But it'd be comfortable and easy, right? Well, it would be easy, but still... Let's get back on track. So Noda su seduced Kamui and lured him here. God damn. So she seduced Kamui and was killed. And then she was left here. Well, that's what you get. Dude's a murderer. What do you think's gonna happen? What's going on, Manny? Hold on. The lead is different, isn't it? Yes. In Yuriko Sonata's case, Sonoda's case, the scene of the murder and the place her body was dumped were the same. Okay, so this was the chick that was killed in the hospital. Yuka Kawai was the one in the sewer. In Yuka Kawai's case, it's two separate places. After killing her in her home, he moved the body. That's pretty complicated for Kamui. You got something, Tetsu? No, never mind. What are we zooming in on? The cigarettes on the table? Here's the victim's profile. The victim is Yuriko Sonoda. 26 years old, female. Worked as a counselor. After graduating from medical school, she started work at this hospital. Her most recent patient was Kamui. Wow, all right. She had been counseling Kamui since about six months ago. Recently, they've been some form of contact almost every day. The cause of death is his specialized harpoon gun. The body shows signs of perforation in four cases. How do you get the harpoon gun? In a mental hospital. She bring it to him? Inside her uterus, we found traces of bodily fluid thought to be Kamui's. We're currently waiting for a positive ID. Holy. Wow, this is, uh. This is like Parasite Eve. We're talking like. Talking about adult stuff here. Estimated time of death is between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. on March 27th. This matches the time the tracking satellite began tracking Kamui almost perfectly. Next up is the profile of the victim found of the sewer. Oh, well, hang on. Why do we have to watch that video? Just so they could show us the awesome 3D graphics? I mean, you know, whatever. Hey, Manny, you gonna get in my lap? Okay, next, uh, yeah, right there. Okay, well, come on then, you have food. Yuka Kawai, 25 years old. Worked at a digital media sales firm. I'm gonna take a drink here in a second. She was in charge of the Kamui project. Where are you going, you weirdo cat? Can you see him? There? <laughs> you want some of this? Here. You can't have any alcohol though, it's bad for kitties. Hmm. Here, come on. No, no, don't. Whoa, whoa, easy, easy crazy. Do you want to get in my lap, silly cute? Children, I tell you. Here, come on. No? Okay, Jesus Christ. You want to... Can I pick you up? Don't freak out and go somewhere. There. Okay. Okay, there's Manny. Where are you trying to go? Don't escape. You... <laughs> Oh, his tail's going back and forth. He, like, he wants to get in my lap and then he doesn't want to actually be there. Silly cat. She took two shots to the head and one each in the chest and the stomach, leaving the same per penetration marks as Sonoda. Estimated time of death is between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. on March 28th. Well, at least if she was shot in the head, it was pretty fast. I hope. Harpoon gun, what the fuck, though? We're waiting on test results for further details. I'll leave the details to Naka. Next. 
All right, and finally, I'll give a simple explanation of Kamui Uhara's history. Please take in as much of this info as you can. He's not your run-of-the-mill criminal, no, clearly not. This man has been completely overtaken by an evil darkness. Go ahead and toss common sense right out of the window for this. This is a photo of Kamui. It's from four years ago. That's Kamui, the shaved head. Let me see. Okay, if I may continue, with regards to how we proceed, that'll do. Unit two is the brawn, and you unit one guys are the brains of the operation, right? That makes sense. That's basically right. Investigation Unit 1 is analyzing the database to try to predict how the suspect will move and where he will appear. Investigation Unit 2 will collect the data not yet in the database and investigate the areas the tracking satellite can't reach. Everyone else await orders. That's all for now. Let's get to it. Did they not say they had two photos? Maybe Kamui was the guy in the background of that photo. Because presumably this is Kamui. Is that the end of the first, second chapter? First whatever? Uh, nope, not yet. Okay, so we're going from the 24 Wards Precinct to... We're going to the 24 Wards Precinct. April 9th, 1999, Friday, Office 24. 3.44 p.m. So it's like a week. A week later, give or take. Heinous Crimes Unit 1. Stakeouts are Unit 2's job. The fuck are you talking about? You whiny bitch. How about you try working your delicate little ass off day after day, huh? Those are your duties, aren't they? The day you pick up isn't worth dick. This forensic investigation bullshit is old news. Go ahead and investigate however you want if you just want to waste time. Please just stop complaining. Complaining? Who the fuck is complaining? It's criticism. You're doing your goddamn job wrong. Up to now, we've collected 26 pieces of useful data. How about that? If you want accurate data, we'll need 10,000 samples. Do you understand? Do you? Do you want to do this for us? Data on 10,000 abandoned buildings and empty rooms? Are you gonna find it for us? If so, then I'll handle the stakeout for you. Well? That's enough, Hashisuka. Fuck. Just shut the fuck up already. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You want us to handle the stakeout, right? Fine, we'll do it. Let's go set up the stakeout. Tetsu, a moment. And his crimes unit two. A love letter? Huh? What's up? I can't read Japanese, so I don't know what it says. I got this from Munakata. Munakata? That's rare. It's Kamui's hideout. For reals? Cat hair. My info. Is certain, yeah. And it's a love letter. Creepy. It was passed on. Sorry. Be careful. I'll take up the rear. Let's meet up later. Got it. Sumio. Come on. Where did it come from? That info. Doesn't fucking matter. Come on, let's move. It's a stakeout. This is no time to mess around, Tetsu. Whatever. We sit here wasting time and he's gonna get away. But just hurry up. What about John? Oh, have I been there this whole time? I'm a zombie. Same day. Apartment. The music changed, which is kind of weird. 4.07 p.m. Sounds like creepy. My room. 
what, like John's room? Explanation. I, I think I need an explanation. What is, what is, I mean, some weird love seat apartment? Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's save real fast. I say, I say, I say, I say, boy. <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn from, uh, old school Looney Tunes. Save over N2, yes. So, why is there no one? It's still save two. And it look I probably said this already, but it looks like it doesn't update the percentage until you finish. If each one is seven, so from lunatics on to the right, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's about right. That's about right. Who knows, though? Oh, no, 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 no. Um. Okay, let's... Okay. Can I contact anybody? No. What implements do I have? Do I have those comics? No, no gun either. All right, move. Oh, I thought something was going to happen. Can't use the phone. I want to check out this explanation. Oh, but I can't go that way. I can go this way. Let's not go that way yet, though. <laughs> because there's a sun item right there. Contact point to the right. I computer let's use the key card or piano or I don't know uh from unknown sender to chinchilla which is so it's got to be uh kusabi I'm saying this without any hint of exaggeration but I know you very well I know where you are what you're doing what sort of man you are what you're thinking and even what you don't think about throughout the course of your everyday life how do I... Out of... That's some weird... Like, Star Trek noise. Out of concern for your own good, I offer a warning. Uh, it might not be from Kasubi, because he has no re... He's, he seems like a very, very straightforward person. Not the type of person that would offer... Or send an anonymous... Anonymous email like this. Uh, I offer a warning. It would be best to avoid sticking your nose into various matters right about now. In this world, knowing too much can cost one their very life. There an there's an amazing number of things for which the phrase, ignorance is bliss, holds utterly true. Please, be sure to keep this in mind. Take care. The bat is always watching. The bat. What is that? Is this Kamui? What is what's going on with this? Okay, litter robot in the background going off. So if you hear like buzzing or whatever, that's why. Uh, can't do. I can't go forward, huh? There's my shoes, presumably. So what? Do I need to go back to the computer? I guess. Okay, maybe I need to click instead of, I think I hit back, not click. Okay, what now? Oh, uh, implement? No.
I mean, I I mean, I used the computer. I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Oh, is that me? That's the TV. Strange. Oh no, not that one. Uh, let's see. Telephone. Not capitalized for some reason. Hey, is that Big Dick? It's me. We've got an emergency. Get your ass to Babylon right away. That's Babylon, got it? Kamui's made a move. Just get there now. Babylon Shopping Center. Hurry. Let's go. Let's go. Division 12, Route Circle, Home. Babylon Street, Babylon SC Shopping Center. Ooh, this looks futuristic too. Same day, Babylon Shopping Center. 8.12 p.m. Closing up shop. You make it yet? I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be there in a bit. Listen, we have no time. Move in ahead of me. Just don't do anything stupid. Got it? I'm counting on you, big dick. Babylon, first floor. Mall Plaza. See, this is different because it's like... Normally, normally they have the 3D stuff on the top. That way, below it, you can read the text box. This is off to the side, and I don't know why. I mean, it could be stylistic reasons. Thankfully, I can't go through the wall. Should I stop here? I don't want to, but I don't know if I'll be able to... Uh, if I'll be able to stop going once I start going forward. So let's, let's stop. Uh, I wish <laughs> stuff like this is why I wish I could you know edit sometimes but what are you gonna do you know excuse me All right, well that is it for today guys. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. Um, this is, I mean, this is pretty interesting. It's it's kind of awkward, I, you know, I mean, Suda51's first game, what are you gonna do, right? But, I mean, you know, it, it's weird, because I see a lot of Killer7 in this, right? Killer7 was, this is more like the the 3D dungeon crawler type, right? Where it's like everything's in a grid and you can move forward and turn left and right and stuff. Killer Seven was was very much the same way, where it's a you know it's on rails, uh, but instead of a little wheel like movement uh, implement contact whatever, it was just like movement plus uh, shooting stuff. So it's it's really interesting to have, you know, having played some of his later stuff, going back and playing his first game and, and just kind of seeing like where he started. Now, I mean, I realize it's not his first game. He had, um, I think he did like a couple wrestling games or something before this that were not his. But this one, this is all him, all him. So it's it's kind of fascinating. It, it really is. And the remaster doesn't help. It doesn't hurt. I can't talk. Partially it's the alcohol. Uh, but it doesn't hurt. It makes it look a little bit more modern. Although, I'm really curious to how it was, you know, originally. Right? But that said, we, we may as well take advantage of the remaster. Just see what it's like. Um, but yeah, any, uh, any, um... Wow. 
wow. Total, total brain, brain moment there. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, though, good, bad, indifferent, let me hear them. I do try and respond to everybody. Uh, that's, you know, depending if YouTube and BitChute are in good moods or not. What is your guys' unique positive moment for today? For me, uh, it's the beer that I'm drinking. It's a Scotch Ale. I don't remember the name. It's like a heavy... Something. Something heavy or heavy something. It's pretty good. I'm, I'm definitely feeling a little bit buzzed at the moment. Um... But that's my unique positive moment. Hopefully you guys are just as good, if not better. Hopefully better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, guys, take care.